Hello and welcome to the Indiana Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you signed up for this one. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Indiana. Here's the order of our schools. We're in session B6. These are the six schools that we'll be presenting during this session. So I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way. I will now step out of the way and turn it over to our first presentation from the representative from Western Michigan University. Thank you very much for that, uh, Russ. Welcome everybody, my name is Anthony Pettis. I am the admissions counselor from Western Michigan University, serving students from the Indiana Territory. Um, so if you are in Indiana, obviously you all are. I am your admissions counselor, so I will be the one who will ultimately be uh, reading your application as well as going through a variety of your uh, information when you start applying. So I'm going to share my screen here quickly to go over some basic information. So here at Western Michigan University, we are a tier one research institution. We're an NCAA division one school. We have about 20, 21,000 students and about 17,000 of those are undergraduates getting their four year bachelor's degree. We have over 150 uh, programs that you can participate in to earn your bachelor's degree in. And you can also see our student to faculty ratio uh, being 16 to one, meaning our average class size is about 32 students. We're extremely proud of this because we wanna make sure that you have everything you need to succeed at Western and thereafter. What I wanna to cover today is really talking about the campus community and who we are as an institution. We wanna give you those opportunities to gain experiential based learning so that you can have that hands-on approach to doing what you're learning in the classroom in a real world or in a practical experience. Whether that is for nurses, when you're working with patients and trying to navigate the bedside manner or understanding how to work an IV. If you're in aviation and you wanna become a pilot, what does it look like when everything is failing and how do you navigate through that stressful situation? We have equipment, materials, and resources all throughout our university to help you succeed at Western and thereafter. You all, where, where you're at in the process, getting ready to begin your college search journey, everything is changing just a little bit differently every, every, every year and quickly within the season of COVID. So with the application process, we are proud to announce that we are going to be test optional for the 2022 fall entry term. We're super excited about this. We accept both the Gold Gateway, which is Western's direct application, as well as the Common App. It is a $40 application fee to apply to Western. However, if you have a financial situation where you can't afford that, you can always apply for a fee waiver or get one requested from your NACAC um, fee waiver request as well. In addition to that, to make a decision on your application, I need your high school transcripts. So that includes being official directly sent from your high school to our institution, whether it is through parchment, if it is through email directly from your high school guidance counselor, I need the official high school transcripts to be able to review that information for an admissions decision. I'm also proud to say that we are one of the more affordable out-of-state institutions with only a $3,000 difference between our in-state and out-of-state tuition. So it's really nice, especially when you're looking at going out of state, we try to keep our costs affordable as much as we possibly can so that students feel that higher education is accessible and attainable with what their dreams and aspirations are. Now, you're probably wondering how do we then assist you with financial aid and scholarships. So our scholarships this year were based on your high school weighted GPA on a 4.0 scale. So as you can see here, these are our different brackets. You are offered the scholarship of the highest value. So if you have a 3.9 GPA, you're automatically going to receive the Bronco Merit Scholarship. These are potentially going to change for the future um, in terms of either the consideration or the amounts, we're not sure at this time, but as of right now, this is how it stands for consideration. You have to apply by the early action deadline. And then there's some additional information within our uh, endowed scholarship, student financial aid and scholarship universe. These are all ways that we wanna help you succeed and thrive and pursue your passion here at Western Michigan University. We're super excited to be here with you all tonight. And if you have questions, please feel free to ask me those in the chat and thank you for your time.
Thank you very much. And I will reiterate, use the Q&A button at any point to ask questions of our representatives. You can ask it for any of them, but if it's for a specific school, just make sure to name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Lawrence Technological University. Hello, I'm Pam from Lawrence Tech. So I'm gonna take a minute here, just one second. I'm gonna share the appropriate screen here. I wanna welcome you all. Um, I am the admissions counselor for um, Lawrence Tech, just one second. Okay, so um, I don't know if uh, you, if, if anyone has been to, uh, to uh, Lawrence Tech University here in Andy, Indiana, but I just wanted to let you know that we're located, where we're located, we're in Southfield, which is about three and a half hours southeast of, um, of uh, uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. So it kind of gives you an idea of where we're located. We are in the number one, uh, number one in the region for engineering, also architecture and technical careers. So it's a really great location for our students. So we'd love to have you travel from Indiana and come see our campus. Um, we have um, great, great co-ops and internships. And we're also very well known for our placement. We have about 92% of our students that have jobs even before they graduate or they are going on to get their graduate degree. Lawrence Tech is a small university. We have about 3,000 students total. We have 2,000 undergraduate students and about 1,000 graduate students. We have an 11 to one faculty ratio and also about 15 students in a classroom on an average. Additionally, our cor courses are all taught by our faculty. We do not have any teacher's assistance at Lawrence Tech. I wanna give you a little brief history about, our, our, about the university. We were actually founded back in 1932 um, in, as a college of engineering. And it was actually founded right next to the Model T plant in Highland Park, Michigan, which is south of where we are right now um, in Southfield. So Lauren, the Lawrence brothers were actually teaming with Ford Motor, um, Mr. Ford, and actually they were training employees in the classroom and then they were practicing what they learned in on the plant. So that was called theory and practice. We continue to operate with that same philosophy. It's a very, very important philosophy to us. So if you come to our campus, you're going to see lots of laboratories, lots of work for our students um, to practice what they're learning. Now that we're um, grow a growing institution, we have four colleges, we have architecture and design, arts and science, we also have business and information technology, and of course our engineering, which is very robust. We have about a hundred different programs for you to choose from. So Lawrence Tech um, has a really great program. It is a, a called LTU Zone. We give you a free laptop if you come to Lawrence Tech. It's loaded with industry grade software that you're gonna use for your major. So we when you leave Lawrence Tech, you're going to have a lot of really good information on how to use the technology. We are a technical school, so that's key for us. Um, we also, um, you know, want to make sure that all that software is supported too through our in our organization. We have a help desk that helps you with that. So we also have um, resident halls on our campus. About a third of our students actually live on our campus. Um, four dormitories, um, all the amenities you would need um, for your dormitories. We love everyone to live on campus, but it certainly is not required. If you play a varsity sport, we do ask that you uh, live on campus. We want you to live on campus because you are juggling so much between your classes and then your, your sport. So um, we also have a tech transit. You can bring your car, but we have a bus system if you need to get around through campus and inside our community. So let's talk about some of the fun stuff. So Lawrence Tech, like I mentioned, is a very small campus, but we have everything that a big school has. We have about 60 clubs and organizations that you can choose from. It could be a special interest group, a club geared towards your major. It could be um, one of our Greek lives. We have 11 different fraternities and sororities. We're part of the NAIA Athletic Association, which is kind of similar to a Division II sport, but we do offer athletic scholarships to our varsity athletes. 
We also have scholarships for esports. We have um, spirit sports like drum uh, lines and marching band and competitive cheer. Those also have scholarships available. Let's talk a little bit about the admissions process. Um, this is an important thing that you all, um, I know, are very focused on. We do accept the common application or our, our application on our website. Um, we do require your application, your high school transcript. If you are a dual enrolled student, we would want trans your transcripts from any kind of college or university that you attended. We take a holistic approach when we look at your um, application. We want to see your grade trend, your rigor of your classes, your school involvement. Our average student last year was about a 3.4. So just for you to kind of gauge where we're at. I want you to be aware that we are test op optional, just like Western for 2021. We're still accepting applications. And then we also have announced that we'll be test optional for uh, 2022. If you do have test scores, we really want you to send them in. It would never negatively affect you, but it may help with your placement tests. So please do that. Once you actually are accepted to the university, we do an automatic review for scholarships ranging from $4,000 all the way up to $19,000 off your tuition. So it's a very generous scholarship that we offer. And then there's over 10 unique scholarships geared towards your interests, maybe DECA or robotics or something like that. And you are all very eligible to apply for those if you uh, meet those, uh, you know, the requirements for those. So I want to wrap up. We um, love to have you on campus. Um, we do, uh, we are offering tours right now, very small tours for two families. You can visit our campus virtually. So visit our website and you can see what Lawrence Tech is all about. If you are a senior this year and have not yet applied, you can use this waiver code LTU 1932 and we'd love to have you um, uh, apply and we will waive your $30 application fee. Okay, with that, I'm going to turn it back over. I'll stop sharing. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. And if you have questions for any of our presenters, use the Q&A button at any time to ask questions. If it's for a specific school, just name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Northern Michigan University. Hi, everybody. My name is Erica. I'm from Northern Michigan University. I can't see you, but I'm excited that you're here. So thanks for coming tonight. Um, so Northern is located in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We are right along the shores of Lake Superior. So our natural setting makes for amazing outdoor experiences, academic and recreational all year round. Many of our students love the outdoors, but you don't have to in order to thrive here. We do offer flights. Um, a lot of students from Indiana will drive, but we have flights that come in from Detroit, um, Minneapolis, and Chicago as well. Um, but Marquette is a safe, friendly, and welcoming community that celebrates all four seasons, like Indiana. We are a mid-sized institution, so we're large enough where we have a lot of programs to choose from, a strong alumni network, connections around the world, nice facilities, but small enough where you have small class sizes and your professors know your name. So the average class size is around 28, the average lab and seminar size is around 15. And this gives your professors the ability to get to know you on a personal level. Um, and those close personal relationships result in mentorship and guidance as you move through your experience at Northern and onto whatever it is you're gonna do next, whether that's grad school, joining the professional world, starting your own thing, um, whatever you're gonna do. So we have over 170 different academic programs to choose from. We have popular programs that relate to the natural setting like fish and wildlife management, environmental studies and sustainability, but also things like nursing, art and design, criminal justice, sports science, a large array of business programs, and um, medicinal plant chemistry, which is the first program of its kind in the nation. And uh, we also offer indoor agriculture now, which nicely complements that. But whatever it is that you are studying at Northern, you're gonna get a hands-on experience right away to help you find out what you love so that you can get more specific um, and what you hate so that you can shift and, and change the right program. You're gonna be working with real people in professional settings with real um, equipment and resources in the real world. And the idea is that you get um, hands-on experience so you're well-prepared when you leave Northern to take your next steps. So for students who are looking at this fall, I did want to mention um, that Northern was face-to-face -face in this past fall and is currently face-to-face. -face. Um, 
and will be again this fall in the plans. Um, so we've made face-to-face -face and instruction uh, a priority for our incoming first year students. So let's talk about student life. Um, I already mentioned that students are outside all year round. They're hiking, they're biking, they're rock climbing, um, ice climbing, surfing, sailing, camping, um, but there's tons to experience indoors too. So we have over 300 student organizations to choose from. They're academic and non-academic. We also offer leadership programs, some that are credit bearing and come with a stipend. And there are community service and volunteer opportunities all day, every day. So that's all of those are a huge part of student identity at Northern. Of course, under normal circumstances, there's also a lot of events, big events happening on campus um, that are gonna keep you busy as a spectator um, or a participant, and that could be the arts, um, the sports, ranging from esports to football, um, really you name it. But what's most important to us in our community is that we're safe and welcoming regardless of your experience, your background, your identity, or your beliefs. So let's talk about money. This is important um, for everybody, but also especially in the pandemic. Uh, so for our out-of-state student, our tuition and fees, our room and board amount to about $28,300. The average financial aid package for out-of-state students is around $19,400. Um, that includes scholarships like our uh, National Academic Award, which brings that out-of-state tuition rate much closer to in-state, um, as well as our Wildcat Achievement Awards. Um, this year we're awarding these with and without the um, test scores, but Northern is now test blind. Um, so we're not gonna be using these moving forward when we award scholarship or when we make admission decisions. We also offer competitive scholarship opportunities, including our presidential scholars competition with awards ranging from $1,000 to a full ride, um, as well as many other free money opportunities. So we would really love for you to come visit Northern. We're offering virtual options, but we're also offering um, on-campus visits as well in limited capacity, um, but are opening new opportunities for this summer as well. Um, but the idea is that you come and check it out and get a sense of things for yourself. Um, all of us here want you to find the right school for you, and there is a perfect school for you out there. One of the best ways to figure that out is to visit. Um, so we'd love for you to come and do that if you can, however you can. Um, if you'd like more information, uh, this QR code is a great way to scan it and get some more. Um, again, my name is Erica and I work with students from Indiana. So my job is to help you through this process and I'd really love to hear from you. Thank you very much. And I'll remind everyone, use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of our representatives. And if it's for a specific school, just name the school in your question. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Grand Valley State University. All right. Thank you, Russ and everyone else. My name is Sarah Tibby, and I am the admissions representative for Indiana from Grand Valley State University. And to just start out, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we create at GVSU, and that's known as the Laker Effect. So the Laker Effect is giving you experiences, opportunities, skills, and knowledge to create change in your personal life, your professional life, your communities, and your societies at large. So we call ourselves one of the biggest small universities that you can find. So we have a large campus, but and you have all the opportunities of a big school, but again, you get that personalized touch of a smaller school where professors know your name, you get to make friends very easily, all of that is included. So as you'll see on the screen, we are continually ranked um, in leading publications such as one of the best in the Midwest by the Princeton Review, one of America's top colleges by Forbes, and one of the best college buys. So we want to make sure you get your bang for your buck. Most of our students, about 94%, are employed or pursuing advanced degrees upon graduation with GVSU, so that's something we're very proud of, and continually working to improve as well. And then also for a lot of our programs um, that require additional licensures, so such as nursing, where you need to pass additional exams prior to entering your field, we have a 96 to 100% passing rate on those. So all of our students are very successful and able to jump into their fields right away. So just a little bit more about GVSU, we are located in Michigan. So for all of you Indiana folks, if you're not as familiar, you'll see on the map, our little GV logo is exactly where we are located. Um, and so we're located right on the shores of West Michigan. 
So we're just a few minutes away from the beautiful beaches of Lake Michigan and the beach towns, if you want a little break and reprieve, but then also we're really close to other cities in the state. So Grand Rapids, we also have a secondary campus there, which is the second largest city in the state. And then also it's a short drive or commute to Lansing, Detroit, and even Chicago. So a lot of students will use that as an opportunity to get experiential learning, community service, internships, co-op experience, et cetera. So in total, we have about 130 undergraduate and graduate degree programs across a wide variety of areas of study. So from anthropology and philosophy to cybersecurity and biomedical engineering. Hopefully within those hundreds of options, there's something for everyone here at GBSU. We are focused on a liberal arts foundation. So that encourages students to explore a wide variety of topics and subject areas. Again, to figure out what you like, what you don't like, but then also to get different perspectives and see how those dots may connect and apply that to your first career or your second career. Again, making you that well-rounded citizen, leader, and employee. And we also do not use any graduate assistants or teaching assistants within the classroom. It is all led by our professors. So the experts in the field teaching you. And for our student life, we have over 400 student clubs and organizations ranging anywhere from more academically minded. So pre-PA club, you know, American Marketing Association to something a little bit more fun. Like we have groups that go out and jog the local trails or go hiking in the area. Um, we have a lot of variety for you. And we have a big event too, where they're all out there together so you can explore what interests you. Now I know cost is a big thing when to consider when deciding on where to go to school. So we wanna make sure that you're making a sound investment at GVSU. So we give you the skills for today, tomorrow, and whatever may come in the future. Because as we all know now, it's unexpected and you don't know quite what's gonna happen. So again, we really put a strong emphasis on experiential learning, service learning, faculty-led research, internships, co-ops, and study abroad as well. We are a leader in study abroad participation, so we hope to send our Lakers around the world again soon. Also, some of our leading employers you'll notice are local, um, but also they're also very national, regional, or even multinational companies. So our students are making a difference in a big way. One thing that's unique to GVSU as well is the Like Your Lifetime Learning or L3 account. So all GVSU graduates, essentially once you graduate, there's $1,000 in the bank for you. If you wanna come back and upskill, earn a certificate, earn a badge or additional credential, that $1,000 is there, again, to make education accessible for all students. So speaking of finances, overall, our in-state tuition is about $22,000. Out-of-state tuition is $27,000. But again, we also have a variety of scholarship opportunities that can make up the difference between the in-state and out-of-state tuition. We do require that all first-year students live on campus your first year, just because we find it, students are more successful that way. You really get adjusted to college life. And we have a variety of scholarship opportunities too to help you manage those costs and minimize your overall net cost. So in terms of our admission process, we do adopt a holistic application process. So we just need you to submit your GVSU application and your high school transcripts. We were test optional for fall 2021 and we will be for fall 2022 as well. So we're gonna look at your overall grade trend, your class rigor, any additional information you share with us. I know with COVID, there's been a lot of challenges and hurdles that you've overcome this year and the years prior to that. So if you share that information with us, we'd like to read it um, and we'll certainly factor it into your application decision as well. So again, feel free, we are offering campus tours if you're able to make the drive up to us or you can tour virtually, but we would love to have you on campus soon or read your application as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you have questions for any of our presenters, just make sure to use the Q&A button. You can type that in at any time. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Kittering University. Awesome, thank you, Russ. I uh, hope everyone can hear me and I'm gonna get my presentation shared here. Oh, wait a second, there we go. All 
All righty, let me go back one slide here. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, hope everyone's keeping safe and, and healthy during these times. Um, but my name is Nathan Cobra, and I am the representative from Kettering University, which is located in Flint, Michigan. And uh, I work with all students in most of the states surrounding Michigan. So Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, the great state of Indiana and Ohio. So excited to share a little bit of uh, information about Kettering University and uh, answer any questions that might come up uh, along the way. So Kettering is a small private um, engineering uh, co-op school. So 2,300 students and then our students are broken down into two different sections. So um, our campus actually usually averages around a, a thousand students, a little over a thousand students on any given term. So what I mean by the academic calendar and, and splitting into two sections is that our students are in, in A and B section uh, we actually operate on a, a terms kind of schedule. So we have four, uh, four terms during our calendar year. We don't have the traditional two semesters and a summer, summer break. So our students are rotating. They do a three month uh, summer school term, then they would rotate to a co-op work term and then back to school and then back to co-op throughout the, the 12 month period. So four three month terms in total. And then depending on which section will determine when you're in school versus when you're in, in co-op. So here's all the majors that we do offer at Kettering, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Our biggest major is mechanical engineering. That's about 50% of our students. And then, uh, you know, after that, computer engineering and computer science and electrical engineering, and then also in the top five um, would be our chemical engineering program. So engineering is, is, is really uh, what we do. And then we also have a very strong business management program uh, for our students as well. So I'm gonna dive into some of the specifics of the co-op experience because that is unique uh, to, to Kettering because it's uh, a requirement throughout a Kettering experience. So that average is usually four to four and a half years for our students, you know, as a normal college experience would. And then uh, because the students are rotating each year, so starting freshman year, students are doing the school work, school work rotation. And so by the time our students are graduating, they have two to two and a half years of paid professional experience. So the co-op start freshman year, you start getting paid freshman year. Um, we have over 400 co-op uh, partners in a wide variety of industries. Um, Kettering was founded as General Motors Institute. So many of our close ties and in, in close partnerships um, are with uh, automotive type, type industries, but not all of them. So a uh, brief sampling of, of those are here. Um, and uh, my role as both an admissions counselor and co-op manager is that I get to work with high school students who are, you know, going through the college search, but also helping our current students uh, find the, the co-op opportunity that best suits them. Um, moving forward, uh, let me just highlight the kind of total co-op earnings, uh, because that is something we, we like to uh, highlight. Um, our students' average uh, hourly rate is anywhere from 14 to, to somewhere around $20 an hour for their co-op uh, wages. And in total, if you do some quick math, you know, our students are earning anywhere from 45 uh, to $70,000 during their undergraduate careers, which is, is quite nice um, in addition to getting the work experience. Um, so a couple of things uh, to highlight about campus life. Um, we have uh, an on-campus residence hall. Um, and we also have uh, Greek life. We have some other apartments and houses uh, near our campus as well. A um, couple things to note, we don't have varsity athletics. We have intramural and club sports, but we do have varsity esports. Um, these are the, the sports that our students compete in uh, both in-state and, and nationally. So kind of a funny uh, joke about Kettering is that our football team is undefeated because we've never, never played. <laughs> but kind of fun, uh, fun note there. Um, some other things that we do in terms, you know, if you have some competitive spirit, we have five uh, Society of Automotive Engineering um, clubs, and three of them are highlighted here. This is our Formula our Race Car, Aero Design, and the Baja uh, Vehicle. So we also do the Auto Drive Challenge and the Clean Snowmobile Competition as well. So those are some neat extracurricular opportunities that our students often, uh, often get involved in. Um, in terms of the campus facilities, uh, we have um, a, a pretty small campus, as you might imagine, with our, our small student enrollment. But something that was a recent addition to our campus was the GM Mobility Research Center. So that's a test track. Um, some companies do come and use that facility in addition to our own 
you know, students and faculty using that space to, to do a lot of, you know, with the, the trend moving towards autonomous uh, vehicles, we do a lot of testing um, on that facility. We also have a really awesome FIRST Robotics Center on campus. Uh, many high school students have the opportunity to compete uh, in that uh, facility and then our Kettering students uh, help mentor and coach robotics teams. So if you're involved in FIRST, uh, that's a, a great thing to, to have on your resume, but also a great way to connect with other Kettering students because 42% of last year's class had done FIRST Robotics uh, during high school. So. Uh, robotics is, is often uh, something a lot of our students have in common. Um, highlighting the admission requirements real quickly, as you might imagine, as an engineering and, and business management school, math and science are our, our priority, but we also like to look holistically at, at applications and your, your high school transcripts. But uh, average GPA is about a 3.7. We are test optional uh, for this, this current year as well as next year. Um, in addition to that, there's some really awesome scholarship and financial aid opportunities at Kettering. So merit scholarships range from uh, 8,500 to 17,500. Um, and then combine that with uh, co-op funds and potentially some need-based financial aid, as well as other scholarships. We have a lot of great opportunities for our students to fund their education. Here's a brief sampling of those other ones, uh, robotics, DECA, pre-med, um, you know, if you have an alumni connection to, to General Motors Institute or Kettering, that could be some scholarship money as well. And then lastly, I want to highlight our pre-college programs. So if any of you high school students are, are itching to get some college exposure and do some things, hopefully these opportunities will be available in person this summer or in the very near future. So these are a couple of our programs that we offer throughout the summer months on our campus for uh, students grades one through 12. So uh, a wide variety of opportunities there. Um, and then one day we'll be able to host uh, campus visits again and, and other tours. So we look forward to connecting in that way. As the admissions rep and co-op manager for Indiana, I look forward to talking uh, with any of you more, uh, more individually in the future. And I look forward to some questions here at the end as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the questions can be submitted using the Q&A button. You can ask questions at any time. If it's for a specific rep, just make sure to name that um, school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Central Michigan University. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Mary. Um, obviously, I work for Central Michigan University, and I recruit part of Indiana. We have a couple of us that recruit in Indiana, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We're all more than happy to help you. I like to start with this slide because this is um, what our campus looks like. It gives you a good idea of the size of campus, what our buildings look like. It's the beginning of the fall in this, which is a beautiful time to be on our campus. We are located in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, which is smack dab in the middle of the state. It's about five hours from Indianapolis. So depending on where you are, how far from Indy you are, that gives you kind of a good idea of how far um, away Mount Pleasant is. We have about 16,000 students on our campus, about 21,000 students total on campus, including our graduate and doctoral students. We're a mid-sized institution. 200 different majors for students to choose from. Our top five areas are business, education, the health professions, broadcasting, and journalism. But like I said, with over 200 different things for to choose from, hopefully we have something that you'd be interested in. We really encourage our students to get involved outside of the classroom. We have over 400 student organizations. They range from things that are more academic. So we have a student social work association to things that are not so academic. We have a Quidditch team that travels all over the nation to compete. We have a Tom Shoes Club. We have um, a pizza eating club where they go around and eat all the different types of pizza in Mount Pleasant. We have so many different pizza places for students to try. So hopefully we have something on that list that you are interested in doing. But if not, it's really easy to start an organization on our campus. We also have Division I athletics and all of our regular home games are free for students. So you don't need to buy season tickets to football, basketball, anything like that. Just show your student ID and you can get right in. We have 23 residence halls on campus and you are required to live on campus for two years, but that's great because you wouldn't wanna commute all the way up there from Indiana. 
we are hosting in-person visits. They're very small. So basically you come and get your own tour and your own um, presentation. So if you are interested in visiting, go ahead and go to our website and you will be able to sign up for that visit. We offer one tuition rate for all of our students. So we don't have an in-state versus out-of-state. Everybody pays about $26,000. And that includes tuition, room and board, book student fees, and a little bit of spending money. Um, we did not raise tuition rates last year, and we have been consistently one of the lowest tuition rates around the state of Michigan. So that's very exciting. Cost is a huge factor for you. So it's really nice that the price that you see, that is um, mo what you're going to play as an out-of-state student. We do offer a lot of merit scholarships like everyone else does that has said on the screen, but ours are a little bit different. So ours are a percentage off. So you can get anywhere from 20% to 75% off of tuition. And we do that merit based percentage off because we're not really sure what the cost of tuition is going to be, but if tuition increases, your scholarship increases. So for example, um, the students that are getting that 20% off merit-based scholarship, that's $2,502 per year. So that gives you just kind of an idea of what that monetary value is. But like I said, that can change depending on how much tuition costs. We are test optional this year and we will be test optional next year as well. So our average admitted student has a 3.4 GPA, um, but that's just the truly the middle. So we do accept students that are above and below that, but the closer you are to that average, the more likely you are to be admitted. You can apply to us through the Common App or through our own application that's right on our website. Our application is really easy. It takes maybe like 15, 20 minutes. We don't require an essay, letters of recommendation, or anything like that. But you are more than welcome to submit those, and we will take those into consideration when we review your application. We do have competitive based scholarships as well. So if you are a leader in your school, you are interested in working with people from diverse backgrounds, you know, or um, you are interested in broadcasting and journalism, um, there, there are some competitive scholarships that you can apply for as well. Those range from $2,000 per year to full ride opportunities. So definitely make sure you are checking out our website to see all of those scholarship opportunities that are available to you. We are also on Scholarship Universe, so that's a great way to find some additional scholarship money. But I would also encourage you to talk to your counselor, talk to your school counselor. They're going to know some community scholarships that you can apply for as well. Any type of scholarship that you want to bring to CMU, we will gladly accept um, to help bring that cost down for you. So this is our contact information. So like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email give us a call. Go ahead and screenshot this. Um, but thank you so much for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I'd like to invite uh, all of our reps to come back on to our, um, or turn on their cameras and their audio. And we can um, do a quick little, um, I'll call it a, uh, I get to play talk show host. Let's put it that way. And uh, for people who are accessing this through either the um, you know, live or if they're accessing it through a recording later, we can do some uh, value added questions here. And the first question we'll ask, we'll have you answer in the same order that you presented. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process right now? We'll start with uh, Western Michigan University. My advice, especially in the college search process right now, is don't be afraid to take advantage of the virtual opportunities. We are trying to do as much as we possibly can as institutions to give you that opportunity to connect with us. And so take a look at the websites, take a look at what opportunities they have. Do they have Zoom, WebEx? So that way you can find alternative ways to connect with us as an institution so you can figure out what is your best fit. Lawrence Technological University. Okay, um, I would say my biggest advice for all of the students searching right now is to try to get a mix of schools on your on your list of um, 
of your that you're seeking. So you may want to pick pick a really big school, a mid-sized school, a small school, and make sure you're doing the proper comparisons so you can get a feel what with um, what really matches your personality. So I really think that's an important thing. And doing the virtual visit, sometimes it's hard to find exactly where those are, but do some digging, carve out like a half hour every day and just spend some time doing some college searching. You'll learn all kinds of information about what's out there for you. Northern Michigan University. I would say that I'm really hoping things go back to normal very soon, um, but we know that it has been stressful and it has been hard. We are all aware of that and we're here to support you. So if you're worried about something, we're a good place to start to get a good idea of you know, your options or what to do next. Um, I would say don't be afraid to use us as a resource because if you're worried about it, chances are somebody else is too. And we've already had to answer that question before and we're trying to meet you where you are. Grand Valley State University. Yes, I would just second and reiterate everything that everyone else has already said because it's amazing advice, um, especially with the virtual opportunities. Um, I know it's hard because we are a little Zoom fatigue everywhere and we wanna see you in person. But it is nice because you can get kind of a one on one interaction that maybe you wouldn't have in a large group presentation. But I would say my newest piece of advice would be to pay attention to deadlines. Don't let anything sneak up on you. Um, so early action is better. Um, that way you can just set it and don't have to worry about it. And hopefully when we're back open, you can all come and visit stress free. Kettering University. Yeah, thank you. So this is a, a piece of advice I share with all high school students whenever I get the chance to talk to them in regards to advice for the college search. Uh, set up a professional email, a new email that's not tied to gaming, that's not tied to social media, and also so you can keep track of all the college correspondence that's important, right? The schools you're applying to are the emails you want to be getting and want to be seeing. So it's maybe not a, a bad idea in sophomore and junior year to create a, a professional college email uh, to use for your college applications and scholarships and so on and so forth. And I'm gonna put my information for further contact in the chat as well uh, for the future. Thank you. So a lot of nodding on that one. Central Michigan University. Yeah, lots of great advice has been said. Um, I just want to reiterate, if you have questions, reach out to the admissions office. Our whole job is to help you make the best decision and give you all of the information you need to make that decision. So if you can't find something, you have a question, reach out to us and we'll point you in the right direction. Sounds good. We have enough time for a second question and I'm showing it on the screen now, but this one's a little more fun. So what's your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll go again in the same order that uh, we presented. So I'll have Western Michigan University start us off. My favorite event here at Western is called Bronco Bash. It's very popular. Happens the weekend before we kick off for school to start. It's basically a huge fair where you can meet all of our student organizations. We've got partnerships with different community organizations that are out here as well. Plus, there is a local movie theater called Celebration Cinema that comes out and gives away their free popcorn bucket. So if you want free popcorn every time you go to the theater, all you got to do is stand in line. Um, we have over 350 student organizations that are out there on the lawn in Sangren Plaza, which is right behind me, that you get to hear live music. And it's a really fun environment to help, especially those first year students, get introduced to the community that is the Bronco family. Lawrence Technological University. So I think one of my favorite things on campus is we um, participate a lot in the SAE. Uh, we have a Blue Devil Motorsports team and they these students will actually build cars from the ground up. It could be a Formula SAE, it could be a Baja, it could be a toboggan, a motorcycle, whatever. And it's, I love watching them unveil their cars every year. It's exciting, it's exciting the ideas that they have. So that's one of my favorite things on campus. Northern Michigan. I really love, um, there's an um, intramural sport called Battleship H2O. So they put a bunch of canoes in the pool and you get in with your buddies and whichever canoe left floating in the pool wins. So that's my favorite. Grand Valley State. That sounds intense, Erica. But <laughs> I would say one of my favorite events is our Student Scholars Day, uh, which happens twice a year. 
So all of our students that have conducted or participated in any research project with faculty mentors or on their own, all get together and get to share what they've learned and what they've put together. So I always learn a lot from it. And it's always exciting to see what students are doing. Um, and I will cheat and say that a favorite tradition of ours as well is whenever our football team scores a touchdown, rowing is a big sport with us. So we like sit down and like row seven, six times. So if they score a touchdown and then obviously if they make the field goal, there's another celebration as well. Kettering University. Yeah, thanks. Uh, one of my favorite traditions is uh, robotics season. So with our first like innovation center, uh, it's a, a really busy place, uh, hosts nine robotics teams, but then hosts, unfortunately this year is not obviously hosting too many competitions, but uh, in a normal spring, hosting a huge robotics competition almost every weekend uh, throughout the spring and even into early summer. So those are some really fun events um, on our campus, uh, amongst many other uh, neat traditions as well. Last but not least, Central Michigan. My favorite is um, we have a 24 hour movie festival where our broadcasting students have literally 24 hours to film a movie, cut it, edit it, and then it has to be ready to go. And it's very fun because then they like walk a red carpet and to answer questions and stuff like that. And then you get to watch everyone's um, movie and it's free to go to, so it's super fun. Well, thanks for sharing the fun stuff about your schools and also all the great information about each of your institutions. And I wanna thank our attendees for joining us tonight. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. This is just one of many sessions hosted, so be sure to sign up for additional ones where you sign up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Indiana. Once again, I want to thank everyone for uh, each of our presenters for presenting today, and thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Take care.